All right, Jags fans, so we are currently a quarter of the way through the season already. The Jaguars sit here at 2-2, two and two. and I'll tell you what, guys, I feel really, really good about where the Jaguars are right now. I think that as a team and organization, we're in a pretty good spot. Now, going into the year, there were a lot of questions about the Jaguars, a lot more questions really than answers, just because, look, we had a brand new coaching staff. We have a lot of like young pieces, also a lot of new pieces with everything that happened in free agency. You have a second year quarterback. There's just, you couldn't sit here before the season and definitively say that any aspect of this team was good or bad. You know, you just kind of had to wait it out. And now the Jaguars sit here at two and two. And I think a lot of us would have taken two and two before the season started. And a big reason is because most Jaguar fans predicted us to have, you know, seven, eight, nine wins. And that's right in that category. Basically the Jaguars, he going two and two, two and two, you're a eight, and nine, nine and eight type of team. So I think that the Jaguars right now, they sit pretty good. And when you look at the two and two record, you look at it, and three out of four of those games were road games. And you played three teams that were perceived as being pretty good, probably above average, um, outside of just the Commanders. The Commanders won, stinks, you lost a game early that really you feel like if that game was played next week, the Jaguars would be able to handle them pretty well. But, you know, young team, learning how to learning how to play football, um, that's the, just that. So now when you look at our record and kind of compare it to the AFC landscape, um, when you look around at the AFC, there are zero teams that are 4-0. Um, there's also three teams that are 3-1, and one, eight teams that are 2-2, two and two, four teams that only have one win, and there is one winless team. Um, so when you look at it, you know, the AFC is who you're competing with to go to the playoffs, and... 50% of the AFC is 2-2 two and two right now. So you're sitting there right in the same boat as, boat as a lot of teams, and you're a game away from the top team in the AFC. So that's looking good for us. Also, the Jaguars are currently tied for, for first place in the AFC South. You know, none of these teams above us at 3-1, and one, none of those teams are in the AFC South, um, which is a good thing. Uh, the 3-1 the, the teams right now are the Ravens, the Bills, and the... Wait, no, are the Ravens? Apologies. There are, uh, I forget. Okay, no, I think there are uh, four, three, whatever. Um, we'll get past that, but whatever. Um, but the AFC, first place in AFC is two and two. So, um, yeah, the Jaguars are right there. I mean, we're not looking up at any other team with in the AFC South as they're, as they're over us. So, uh, the Jaguars are right there. And also, um, when you look at the other teams in the NFC South, you already smoked the team in third place with the Indianapolis Colts, and you actually get a rematch against them in a couple of weeks. And you also had the Texans in your conference and they're in your division, and they're the only team in the NFL without a win right now. So when you look at the company in the AFC South, it should be pretty favorable. Of course, we still had to get over that Tennessee hump, and we actually don't play them for a little bit, unfortunately. So you know we won't really be able to strike any kind of revenge on them for a little bit. Now, another thing that we look at is like after the next four or five weeks, we should really know what we are. And we have a really, really favorable stretch of games coming up. You have coming up the Texans, Colts, Giants, Broncos, and Raiders. All these teams look pretty vulnerable and all these teams look like they could be ready to strike. I know the Giants right now are three and one, but they they kind of seem like a fake three and one. You got you guys know how during the season you guys get that. So really all these games, the Jaguars should be favored in, in several of these. And not only are they easier opponents compared to what we've played, you also have three of these games at home. One of these is in London and one is an away game. So next week the Jaguars should finally be able to get that monkey off of our back when it comes to beating the Texans. So we should be three and two going into that Colts game. So really when I look at this we should go at least four and one. I know that the Jaguars will probably drop a game because, look, we're not a team yet that I can sit here and say, oh, we're going to rattle off five straight. Easy. No, we'll, we'll probably, you know, we might trip and fall and lose one of these games. Hopefully it doesn't come in the next two weeks because, look, you want to beat your AFC South teams. I mean, we haven't beat the Texans since 2017. Eight losses in a row. Okay, it's about time we break that. 
Um, you also play the Colts. You just smack the Colts 24 to nothing. They look weak. They look vulnerable. It's clearly a good matchup going on there. Uh, we should be able to go to Indianapolis. We should go over there and win. And then all of a sudden, boom, 3-0 in the AFC South. You're 4-2. I don't want to look ahead at anything, but, you know, I'm a fan. I'll look ahead. And, you know, after these five games, we'll be halfway through the season. And then we can really sit here and evaluate what we are. But this is the big thing, man. You got to get over that stretch. At Like, you can't go any worse than three and two. Three and two, you know, I guess it's fine. But if you go two and three, then that's, you know, that's pretty shameful. You got you to gotta figure out a way to, you know, win these games. So that's one thing that we had to look forward to is really this next stretch of games when it comes to the opponents and when it comes to where the games are played, it should be simpler than the first quarter of the season. Now, what do we know about the Jaguars right now? You know, because I, I mentioned that there were a lot of questions about this team, a lot more questions than answers. So what kind of answers do we have? Uh, we know the right coaching staff is in place. You know, Doug Peterson, it feels like the team has bought into Doug Peterson. You know, it feels like just the, the offensive scheme is really good. You know, we're seeing wide receivers run wide open. Um, you're also seeing really good stuff on a defense. Mike Caldwell's taking control of this defense. It's a shame we're coming off that Eagles game. And, you know, the Eagles game just, it's, it, it's you know, this isn't an excuse, but it stinks. The weather stinks. I, I hated that the weather was such a slop fest because, you know, it feels like we were kind of taken out of our own elements and it was becoming a different game. Um, another thing that we know about the Jaguars is that this team can smack around some teams. Look, you saw our two victories come in dominating fashion. 24 to nothing against the Colts, who were perceived as a pretty good team. Um, you also beat the Chargers 38 to 10, who was also perceived as a pretty good team. So, you know, we know that we can smack around some good teams or some teams in general. So that's one thing that look, we didn't get we haven't got dominated yet. Um, another thing is that this defense is explosive. Look, this defense is getting sacks. It's getting turnovers already. You only need one more interception on the year to tie 2021's total. And these teams seems to get turnovers in bunches. It's just a fun, explosive defense. We're finally able to get pressure on a quarterback, you know, rushing four. We have linebackers that can go sideline to sideline. It's really good stuff. Another thing that what we know is that, look, our wide receiver room is good enough right now. It's good enough. We think Christian Kirk is pretty good. Um, but outside of that, we don't have like, you know, the two, three, four, like great, highly drafted receivers. But right now, our, you give a lot of credit to Doug Peterson, Press Taylor for being able to put in offensive schemes to, you know, keep have these guys get open. You know, it's something that we really haven't, you know, seen out of a Jaguar, really these Jaguar teams in a long time. Um now, here are some questions that we have about the Jaguars still. You know, I don't go with, usually I mention this guy a lot sooner, but Trevor Lawrence is still a big question. Now, he's shown that, look, he can throw the ball over the place. He, you know, has all the goods. He seems like he has the mental makeup. But, you know, he's coming off the game where he had five turnovers, you know, really bad fumbles, a really bad interception. And when you look at it, if Trevor Lawrence plays a little bit better, we're 4-0. I mean, I mean, straight up, a couple of the games, if Trevor takes over that commander's game, we win that game easy. If he hits a couple more throws, you win that game. How about the Eagles game? You turn the ball, you turn over the ball five over, you turned the ball over five times. Unacceptable. You know, you, you lose that game by one possession. You, you only lost the Eagles game by eight points when you, when you committed five turnovers. So yeah, Trevor, I mean, I, I'm still a big believer in Trevor Lawrence. I am as big as a believer as, as I am today, as I was before the season, the day we drafted him, the day the Jets beat the Rams. I'm still as much of a believer in Trevor Lawrence, but you know, we definitely need to see improvement out of him, being able to make the deep throw, you know, not missing some of these, you know, easy passes, especially in the first quarter. He always seems to start pretty slow. Um, so that's one thing that we need to see out of Trevor Lawrence. Another question that we have is can the Jaguars win close games? Like, we don't know that yet. Look, the two games that the Jaguars won came in dominating fashion. You know, one game we win by three possession, the other game four possession. But both of the Jaguars' losses have been by one possession. So can the Jaguars win close games? You know, can we, can the defense sit there, you know, if the opposing team has the ball, can they shut down uh, an offense in three to four minutes that they have one drive left? So far, we haven't done that. 
What about the Jaguars offense? Can Trevor Lawrence take the ball down three, four, five, whatever it is, drive the drive the team downfield and get a touchdown? We haven't seen that yet. So that's a big thing. Can the Jaguars win close games? Because, you know, close games are much, you know, are hard. I mean, it's hard to close these ones out. It's easy when you're just making it rain points and it's just, you know, the defense is on his heels and they've given up and you're just kind of putting it on them. Yeah, we still have to figure out, can this team win close games? Um, and there's still... 13 games left, so plenty of opportunity for that. And also, what happens if the Jaguars' depth starts to become an issue? Because, look, in this, Jaguars haven't dealt with many injuries this year, and it's been a blessing. You know, you don't want injuries. Um, outside of, look, we had Shaquille Griffin get hurt a game. Trey Herndon went in there and filled in nicely. Zay Jones did not play this last game, and... You know, we only had two wide receivers catch the ball, Christian Kirk and Jamal Agnew. Also, Fatu Kasi left the game in the second quarter of this last game. And you saw it because all of a sudden, Miles Sanders started running crazy on us. And we didn't have anybody that could fill in. I mean, when, you're, when your defense is on the field so much, you know, there's only so many snaps guys like Devon Hamilton um, can really get. And, you know, you wonder if this is a, a position that they try to make a move for whether it be via free agency or maybe they trade for a guy like the Jowers did with Marcel Darius not too long ago um, like they did in 2017 I should say I, it's it's a shame it didn't work out with Malcolm Brown uh, the Jaguars like basically cut Malcolm Brown and no team assigned him so I wonder if he was just got fat happy and just kind of gave up on football I don't know um, so that's a big thing like if the Jaguars, we haven't really seen many injuries, but what if the injuries start piling up? What if all of a sudden we're missing two offensive linemen, a couple defensive linemen, one of our linebackers is hurt? You know, once you start stacking these different injuries, how do we respond? Do we look like a whole different team? So I remember in the preseason, we were sitting here like, okay, we are razor thin at depth. And that really hasn't been tested just yet. And it actually did get tested last game because Foley Fadukasi gets out for like a game, for like, one game and we look like a completely different defense so yeah a lot a lot of different stuff that happened there's a lot of different questions for the Jaguars but to wrap it all up man we're two and two right now I feel pretty good about it we're two and two two and oh in the AFC one and oh in the AFC South we got a good stretch of games coming up it's October it's been beautiful weather out I like that. We play several games in Jacksonville a game in our home away from home in London so it feels like there's a lot of good things going for us, and it's and it's pretty exciting. So we're in October. We're still excited about Jaguars football. So I think that is also a win in itself. So let me know what you guys think about how you feel with the team right now. I know a lot of people, we should be 4-0. We should be 4-0. But look, we're 2-2 two and two right now. Uh, we missed out on some opportunities. We got to... Uh, we're still a new team, a young team, but I think we're, I think we're progressing just fine. So... Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Drop a like for me, please, on your way out. Do it for the algorithm. And with all that said, go Jets. Okay, Jacksonville Jaguars. Too much for your crew to handle. Keep it lit. And this is the number one YouTube channel by UCF Jaguar. Yeah, we about to blast off. If you've been a fan, then this is the dopest platform. Yeah, never hold back. Gotta represent for the tail and black.